وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد The Sahaba رضي الله عنهم asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to narrate to them a beautiful story. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed a beautiful story in the Quran and Allah سبحانه وتعالى makes mention of this. نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين. We have revealed in this Quran for you a beautiful story. The best of stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of and he says prior to this you had not known this story and the story starts when this young boy saw a dream Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam he got up one day from his sleep very happy and he was excited and he rushed to his father oh my father I've seen a dream it was a unique dream إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين. Remember when Yusuf عليه السلام went to his father and told him, Oh my father, I have seen in my dream that eleven stars and the sun and the moon. were prostrating to me. They were in sujood to me. And that is something that was strange. His father was a Nabi, messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yaqub, the Prophet Jacob, may peace be upon him. The father understood immediately that this means there must be some elevated status of this young child, something very high. He had 10 brothers from another mother and one brother from the same mother. The one brother that was from his same mother's name was Benjamin or Benjamin in English. His other brothers had different names and they were older than him. They were very jealous of Yusuf alayhi salam. You see, his brothers were born from another mother. Yaqub alayhi salam treated them all the same. However, his children, the others, they had a wickedness in their heart. Unfortunately, they were very jealous brothers. And he knew that if his brothers find out about this dream, because they're also the children of a prophet and a messenger, they grew up in the household of a prophet and messenger, so they might have a bit of the understanding when it comes to dreams, for example, when it comes to the deen spiritualities. So what did he say to his son? Ya bunayya, la taqsus ru'iyaka ala ikhwatika fayakidu laka kayda. Oh my son, Do not relate this dream to your brethren because if you do, they may plan a plot against you. They may plan your downfall. And what did he say? <laughs> Indeed, shaitan, Satan is a clear enemy against man. He is Clearly saying, the children are good, the youngsters are good, but shaitan is who is bad. Yusuf alayhi salam, innocently, he related the story to his brothers. Allahu Akbar, because he was excited, the young boy, you know what, I've seen a dream. And in this dream, I've seen myself, this, this, this what happened. Now the brothers, they started becoming jealous of him. And when he wasn't around, they had a little informal meeting where they said, إذ قالوا ليوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا ونحن عصبة إن أبانا لفي ضلال مبين. This is going overboard. Our father always favors Yusuf and favors Benjamin and favors especially Yusuf over us. And look at us, these ten of us, ten of us, we're all young, we're all mature, we're all strong. Ten of us make a strong gang, a strong group, and our father favors Yusuf over ten of us? No, our father is in great astray. Our father is not aware of what he's thinking of. How could our father favor Yusuf over us? We are those who stand by him. We are those who help him. We are those who will be there for him. We are the young and strong ones. And what's Yusuf compared to us? He's only one and we are ten. 
and over all this, our father favors Yusuf over us. This is not acceptable to us. And a word from here, and a word from another one, and a third word from here, and the tension just increases in their hearts. So what did they do? They started planning things. So the worst plan came out. Just kill him. Imagine the first thing, kill him. Or throw him into a far off land. Take him very, very far away and get him lost there somewhere. At least then your father will give you a bit more attention. After we do such a crime, who could repent to Allah? This is what they said. So these people are Muslims, they're believers. They grew up in the house of the prophecy, so they know what's right, they know what's wrong, they know what's crime, they know what's forbidden, they know what's acceptable. And they know if they're going to do such an action by killing their own brother or beating him unlawfully, they know it's haram. So they feel guilty about it. So what do we do? He said, we'll do it, then repent to Allah. Let's kill him, beat him, do whatever we have to do, and then we could repent to Allah and Allah will forgive. قال قائل منهم لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب يلتقطه بعض السيارة إن كنتم فاعلين. One of them said, Listen, let's not kill him. Don't kill Yusuf. You rather throw him into a well that is unused and cover it up. Maybe a caravan might pass. They'll collect him and take him somewhere else. They'll do whatever they want, but at least we know we wouldn't have killed him. So they accepted that. They realized killing him is too much of a crime. Beating him to death is also haram. Let's take the lesser one. At the end, we'll get rid of him, get the attention of our father. And we did not commit such a major crime. But there's a problem here. Yaqub is so attached to Yusuf and his brother that Yaqub would not let Yusuf go anywhere alone. And they know that's the character of their father. They know that their father loves Yusuf so much that he would not let go of Yusuf to go anywhere without 100% assurance. Without 100% guaranteed that he trusts his people. They spoke about it and they went to their father. قالوا يا أبانا ما لك لا تأمنا على يوسف وإنا له لناصحون. They said, Oh, our father, why don't you trust us with Joseph? May peace be upon him with Yusuf. Why don't you trust us with him? Send him with us. Why don't you trust us with him? Yet we are genuine. We are those who are genuine. We are his brothers. We have such a genuine feeling for him. We want to take him sometimes with us. أرسله معنا غدا يرتع ويلعب وإنا له لحافظون. Send him, please. We begging you. Tomorrow we're going to play. So when we go and play, send him with us. We'll enjoy. We'll do this. We'll play a bit of sport and we'll do what have you. And we'll come back and inshallah we will protect him. So Yaqub alayhi salam was very intelligent. He knew there was a little bit of rivalry there. And he looks at them and says, Inni la yahzununi an tadhabu bih. It will make me sad if you people take him. It will make me sad. Wa akhafu an yakulahu al-dhi'bu wa antum anhu ghafilun. I fear that a fox might come and eat him whilst you people are oblivious and you're not really watching him. So that's why I wouldn't really like to send him with you. قالوا لئن أكله الذئب ونحن عصبة إنا إذا لخاسرون. How can a wolf eat him? If a wolf eats him or if a fox eats him, then we are all there. We would be the losers. The loss is ours just as much as it's yours. So the father reluctantly allowed them to go. Yusuf عليه السلام he loved his brothers and he trusted them. He trusted them to a certain extent, except for what his father told him. It says on the way, he started to play around them. And each time he went to one of them, he went to the smallest one, he started poking him and pushing him. So he went to the older brother, complaining to him about the smaller brother. 
and he started poking him and pushing him as well. He went to the third one, he did the same thing, fourth, fifth, until he finally reached the oldest one. And the oldest one resented him and pushed him away too. So they started pushing him and bullying him around. And each time he complained to another, the other would resent him too. Until finally they reached the well. And they surrounded him. And they took off his shirt. So it was bare from the top. And that's when he realized, alayhi salam, that his brothers had plotted to do something evil to him. They brought Yusuf alayhi salam and they put him on the edge of the well. As they were doing so, obviously a child struggles. What are you doing to me? They're going to struggle. They're afraid. So we're struggling. You can imagine. And he's appealing to them. Please, please. Why? What did I do to you? Why are you doing this? And they wouldn't reply to him. So they threw him in the well. He fell to the bottom with so much pain. There was water in there and there were some rocks. So he climbed up on one of the rocks and sat alone in the darkness. And his brothers left him and went away to their father. The reason they took his shirt is because they went and got some blood from a goat which they slaughtered and placed the blood of the goat on the shirt. Allah inspired Yusuf in which Allah says, one day Yusuf, you'll tell them about this day. In other words, one day they'll come and you'll see them and you'll remind them about this day. They came to their father in the evening crying and upset saying, Oh dad, you know what happened? And their father so upset and he's looking for Yusuf, was Yusuf? They said, Oh father, we went out to play and have fun as we told you. I wanted to have fun with Yusuf and let him play. And while we were competing with each other and we left Yusuf with our stuff, with our luggage, and while we lived in there, we were playing and racing with one another and occupied with the competition. We came back and we saw Yusuf dead, eaten by a wolf. We know you're not going to believe us, even if we were truthful. Allah made them stumble on that word. Even when we are truthful, see, even when we are truthful, you still don't believe us. You want evidence, our oh father, you want evidence? If our tears are not enough, we're going to show you something else. Akbar. They came and they brought the shirt and they had false blood on the shirt. He took the shirt and he looked at it. And you know what was funny? You know what was amazing? That the whole shirt was not even ripped. The Yaqub said, Subhanallah, how merciful this wolf is. He ate my son and left his shirt. He understood this is a game and he's a prophet and a messenger. He understands the characters of people. So Allah says that Yaqub immediately knew what had happened. He said, قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا فَصَبَرٌ جَمِيلٌ he said, no, your nafs has convinced you that evil is good and you've justified your act. I exercise immense patience and Allah will assist me against what you have described and done. From that day, Yaqub was sad he was never the same for many decades to come. In the meantime, the scene changes and goes to where this young boy is. After a while, The caravan passed later on. It was not such a long time. The caravan passed and they sent their messenger to go and get some water from the well and when he released or when he rolled down his bucket what happened he thought it's filled with water picking back, picking it up again and he looked at it oh good news this is a little boy so these people as soon as they picked him up what did they do they took him silently as though he was merchandise 
Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they then sold him. وَشَرَوْهُ بِثَمَنٍ بَخْسٍ دَرَاهِمَ مَعْدُودَةٍ on that side, the father and the brothers have their own scene. And here they have sold this boy in the market as a slave for a few dirhams. The one that bought him, his name was the Aziz. Aziz was the honorable one. Who's the honorable one? He was the treasurer of Egypt. Back then, there was no pharaohs. There was a king. And the king had ministers and the strong, second strongest person in the country was the treasurer. His name is Al-Aziz, the honorable one, and he was the treasurer. He bought Yusuf from those people that found him. And he had a wife, but he was impotent. He couldn't actually have any intercourse. So he couldn't be with a woman. She was still chaste. She was still chaste, still a virgin, and therefore, we'll see what happens later on with her. So he did not have kids, and it was embarrassment for him not to have kids. So when he found this young, beautiful child, he bought him, he went back to his wife and he said, take care of this child and raise him a good way, raise him a good raising, let him grow up within us. Maybe we'll benefit out of him as a slave or use him as a son, at least to our people who've got a child. So now Yusuf alayhi salam has become the servant of the Aziz and this noble woman. Noble as in to her people she was famous, she had a very high authority. And she was youthful, she was young and she was actually very beautiful. The wife of the Aziz. Everybody respected her, she had a very high status in society and very wealthy and very powerful. Power, beauty and wealth. And she and he was her slave. وكذلك مكنا ليوسف في الأرض ولنعلمه من تأويل الأحاديث والله غالب على أمره والله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون. Which means, thus did we establish Yusuf in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of stories, of dreams. And Allah has full power over his affairs, but most of the people do not know. And the Aziz loved Yusuf so much that he treated him more than a son. He started even to pass on some work to him, some responsibility, some authority. So from where he was, from being where his brothers plotted against him to be a slave, into being one of the most powerful people in the country until the big test came to Yusuf when Yusuf السلام, reached his age the age of prime he became now mature fit strong and pious and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of prophecy to him and Allah azza wa jal gave Yusuf السلام, the great knowledge not only the worldly knowledge but also the spiritual knowledge, the hereafter knowledge as the scholars describe it to be. And now becomes the big test on Yusuf Adding over all this, not only that Yusuf was mature, a young man, righteous, pious, God-fearing and knowledgeable, but Yusuf was a so beautiful looking person, so handsome. That the Prophet Muhammad said when he went on the journey of Mi'raj and he went past Yusuf السلام, he said, Ba Allah, he's given half of the beauty. Half of the beauty. And the scholars described that as to be that Allah Azza wa Jal created two beauties, one for the whole world and the other for Yusuf. السلام. That's how beautiful he was and that's how handsome and beautiful looking Yusuf السلام, used to be. And she saw and planned and plotted for the best time for her to fulfill her desire. And waited where most of her slaves were away. Her own husband was away. And she prepared the perfect room in the perfect moment, in the perfect timing. She called Yusuf and she closed the doors. 
close. Come close. Let's do the fahsa, let's do the wrong. But Yusuf said, Ma'ad Allah. Ma'ad Allah, I'll seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way. No way such an action will be accepted from someone like myself. Not just only because I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also your husband is the one that looked after me. I can't get behind his back and do something like this, especially to his wife. This is disrespect. She made a firm intention, I'm definitely going to get this boy. Had it not been for the signs that Allah had sent this particular boy, and had it not been for the protection of Allah, and had it not been for the fact that the, the, the master of the home was coming and so on, this young boy would have also fallen into the trap. Yes, initially he had planned, he made a dua to Allah, Ya Allah, protect me. But when the pressure mounted and it continued and the door continued knocking and she continued trying and so on, Allah says, had it not been for our security to have secured this young boy, he probably would have fallen as well. Allahu Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ This is how we chose to save him from evil and from immorality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from evil and immorality because Allah says he was from amongst the chosen ones. She ran behind him. And when he got to the door to try and escape, she had pulled the shirt and torn it from the back. And when they saw the master, meaning her husband had come in from the door and he's seen a little bit of commotion, she quickly opened her mouth and said, Ma man arada bi ahli illa an aw alim. What is the punishment that you should be served upon someone who's intending to harm your own wife? Look at how she turned the table. But Yusuf alayhi salam, he's saying that saying, he's not going to keep quiet. She is the one that tried to attack me. She is the one that asked me for this evil act. She is the one that's been chasing me and I'm running away from her. As because I fear my Lord and respect for you. Well, he's going to witness for him. The treasure is going to take his wife's word over Yusuf's word. He's not going to take Yusuf's word over his wife's. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the miracle that occurred. There was a miracle, a little child that spoke out at that particular time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this child. And the child says, Allah says, Shahida shahidum min ahliha. There was a little shahid, a witness that spoke, innocent witness. The witness says, Look at the shirt. If it is torn from the front, it means she is telling the truth and he is guilty. And if it is torn from the back, it means she was running behind him. That is why the shirt is torn from the back. So she is a liar and he is telling you the truth. So this man looks at the shirt and he sees it is torn from the back. He realized he is saying the truth and she is the liar. And he said, Oh woman, this is from your evil plotting. Your plotting is indeed a great evil. That's why he told his wife, Oh Yusuf, keep quiet over what happened. And embarrassment embarrassed my family. And what did he do to his wife? He said, You just you should repent and ask forgiveness for what he did. This is the wrongdoings. And that's it, closed. Yusuf, keep quiet, don't say anything, continue doing and live your normal life. And he told her, You did something wrong. You did something wrong. You should repent, and that's it, finish. There's a lot of slaves in that palace, in the house. And they heard what's happened. And they went and spread the rumor around. Went and spread the news to everyone. And the word went around. And not only around, but even went to the closest people 
to the treasurer's family, the other minister's wives, the other rich people. They were talking about the action of the treasurer's wife. They saying, what kind of a woman is she? She goes out of all men. She goes and chases her own slave. How low is this woman? Out of all men, she'll go behind a slave. She is a woman that she's unbalanced. She's crazy. Her love towards that slave looks like beyond the joke. The news came to her. The people speaking about her. And about what she attempted to do with her own slave. So she wanted to prove everyone wrong. She wanted to show them that what she did was out of her nature because this man, Yusuf alayhi salam, he is extremely too good looking person. And she invited those women over. She prepared a nice session, all of them sitting down and she got fruits. And she didn't get any fruits, she got fruits that needs peeling. And she got them knives to peel the fruits. And while they were sitting down speaking, she got Yusuf to wear his best of clothes. And Yusuf alayhi salam doesn't know the plotting and the planning that she is planning. And while they are sitting down laughing, smiling, eating the fruits, she'll call and she'll call and order Yusuf to come in. So the door opens and Yusuf walks in. They stop and look at Yusuf. They forgot everything around them. فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ أَكْبَرْنَهُ وَقَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ وَقُلْنَ حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ When they saw him, they were overtaken by how handsome he was. And they exclaimed whilst they were busy cutting, not realizing they were cutting their hands. And they said, wow, this is not a human being. This is an angel. And in the process, they cut their hands. Look at yourself now. You're blaming me. You're trying to put the fingers on me. Look at yourself now. Now you know where I come from. You were talking about me and degrading me in front of everyone. That I couldn't grab myself. It looks like the same thing with you. And every other woman. And the truth is, the truth is, yes, I wanted him for myself. I tried to get him for myself. I wanted to do what everyone's talking about out there. But he refused. And I'm telling him, in front of you all, if he does not do what I want him to do. In other words, I did not forget what I wanted to do from I'm still insisting to do with him what I wanted to do. If he does not do what I am ordering to do, I'm going to lock him up and I'm going to degrade him in front of Ephraim. So the women came to him and said, please do what she wants. We don't want you to be in prison. We don't want you to be like, you want to be noble. Listen to her. So now they're trying to seduce him to, to accept. وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِمْ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ Yusuf alayhi salam made this dua that Ya Allah, for me it is better to be jailed than to engage in this sin. For me it is better to be jailed than to engage in this sin. And if you Ya Allah are not going to keep it away from me, then I might fall into a trap and become from amongst the ignorant. So the treasurer's wife sat down with her husband, the treasurer, second most powerful man in Egypt. And she plotted and planned with him. She said, listen, the fadiha, the embarrassment is going to reach everywhere. If you don't lock up Yusuf, and not only locking up Yusuf, but I'm afraid if you lock up Yusuf without doing anything else, people will start thinking that because Yusuf refused committing the action with us or with me, he got locked up. We need to prove to everyone that it was Yusuf the one that was trying to do the wrongdoing. Not me, I'm the treasurer's wife. You don't want to get this embarrassment. So they planned and plotted. And then they came up with a suggestion and solution. And it was acted on Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam, 
he was put on a donkey in the opposite direction and this is one of the ways that humiliate someone instead of riding the donkey the right way they put him the reverse way means humiliation and he ordered people to grab the drums and walk in the middle of the streets of Egypt beating the drums and saying that Yusuf the slave of the treasurer will be locked up because he tried to go near the world treasure his wife and kept on going around the streets of Egypt humiliating Yusuf alayhi salam Yusuf the slave of the treasurer will be locked up because of the crime that he had committed trying to get near the treasurer's wife humiliating Yusuf alayhi salam when he entered the prison two others walked into the prison with him those two men they were slaves working for the king. They were slaves working for the king. One used to work in the bakery of the king. He used to make bread for him. And the other one used to be the one that fills up the cup of wine for the king. And the king heard something about him. He was suspicious about them two doing something, stealing something, trying to plot something. So he locked them up. And those two lived in the same cell with Yusuf alayhi salam. They see Yusuf alayhi salam. His piety, his manners, his akhlaq, his prayers, his high spirit. They were amazed. They've never experienced someone like this in their life. So they had this respect for Yusuf alayhi salam. And one night, they saw a dream. قال أحدهما إني أراني أعصر خمرا وقال الآخر إني أراني أحمل فوق رأسي خبزا تأكل الطير منه نبئنا بتأويله إنا نراك من المحسنين The first one says, Oh Yusuf, I have seen a dream. In my dream, I saw that I was squeezing some juices. I was squeezing wines. And the other one says, I saw a dream that there was a loaf or a bread on my head and the birds were eating from it. The birds were eating from it. Please, can you tell us what is the meaning of this dream? You look like a good man. Allahu Akbar. So he says, قَالَ لَا يَأْتِيكُمَا طَعَامٌ تُرْزَقَانِهِ إِلَّا نَبَّأْتُكُمَا بِتَأْوِيلِهِ قَبْلَ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمَا he says, don't worry, before the next meal, I will tell you the meaning of your dream. But in the meantime, between now and then, I want to talk to you about something. The first thing I want to talk to you about is how Allah has blessed me. I am the son of Yaqub, who is a prophet, who is a son of another prophet, who is Ishaq, who is a son of another prophet, who is Ibrahim, Allahu Akbar. And he's making mention and he says, many people are ungrateful of what Allah has given them. Many people do not know and they are ungrateful of what Allah has bestowed upon them. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, who was the most noble of the prophets? Obviously, after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this nobility is being spoken of lineage. He says, well, if you look at Yusuf alayhi salam, he is a Nabi, son of a Nabi, son of a Nabi, son of a Khalil. The level of a Khalil is higher than a Nabi. It's a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. What a great lineage. Yet he was still in the jail. Allahu Akbar. Yusuf alayhi salam then says, Ya sahibay sijuni. Oh my companions. Look at how beautifully he's calling them. Beautiful words. Oh my beloved two companions of the jail. My comrades who are seated here. Aarbabum is it better to worship so many little deities and gods or is it better to worship the one who made you the supreme the most powerful who is better to worship so he engaged in a discussion. Worship whoever made you, whoever made you, whoever created you, you put your head on the ground solely and only for him. Whether they accepted or not is not mentioned. We don't know. After that, he says, Ya sahibai amma ahadukuma fayasqi rabbahu khamra. 
وأما الآخر فيصلب فتأكل الطير من رأسه قوضي الأمر الذي فيه تستفتيان Oh my comrades in this jail The first one of you You're going to be let free And you will be serving the king here And you will be squeezing all his juices for him That's the interpretation of your dream And as for the next one Very sadly you're going to be crucified, executed And the birds will eat from your head That is what is going to happen And I've been informed this through inspiration So the one that saw in the dreams it was squeezing wine He was released and went back to his old job And the one That saw in his dreams he was carrying a basket Of bread and the birds were eating from it He was found he was found guilty and was crucified on the, uh, on the cross and the bread the bird came and ate from his flesh the one that survived the one that saw it in the dreams that he was squeezing wine and he went back to his old job what did Yusuf say to him tell them listen by the way mention me in front of your king tell him about me and the reason that I'm here I'm an innocent man Allah Azza wa Jal says that the shaitan made the one that survived forget about everything that Yusuf told him. And Yusuf stayed in the prison, most narration says seven years. Seven years. Seven years Yusuf alayhi salam was forgotten and left in the prison. One day the king sees a dream. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَأْكُلُهُنَّ سَبْعٌ عِجَافٌ وَسَبْعَ سُنْبُلَاتٍ خُضْرٍ وَأُخَرَ يَابِسَاتٍ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ أَفْتُونِي فِي رُؤْيَايَ إِن كُنْتُمْ لِلرُؤْيَا تَعْبُرُونَ The king sees a dream which was very weird because he saw seven thin cows eating up seven fat ones so this didn't make sense to him and then he'd seen seven dry corns and seven green ones and this for some reason made him think he got up and he felt that this is now a message so he asked his people oh my people please can someone interpret this dream what did they say they said nah this is just a nightmare it's just a dream. It's one of those weird dreams that everybody dreams. While the king is so worried and stressed over that and speaking to people and consulting this person and speaking to that person, who's listening? Who's listening? The one that was locked up with Yusuf. When he heard about interpretation dreams, he remembered. The best person to interpret dreams is Yusuf. He said, I know someone. Oh King, I know someone, Yusuf, the one that was locked up with him, that righteous man. He interpreted my dreams and exactly why he interpreted my dreams became true and he interpreted another person's dreams and exactly why he interpreted that dream also happened. He is the best person for you. Present me to him. So he was sent to Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf, oh Yusuf, my beloved friend. Yusuf says, yes, what is it? We want an interpretation of this dream. And he related the dream. And he says, this is what the king saw. And this is what happened. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam immediately responded. يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن إلا قليلا مما تحصنون ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصرون. He says, oh, listen, you are going to have seven years of very good crop and produce. You should save as much as you can in these seven years of good produce because after that there is going to come seven years of drought when nothing will be produced. So you will have to use whatever you've saved and you'll have to bring it. And after that, it will return back to normal. You'll have a year flourishing. So this man ran back to the king and he interpreted it. He realized, yes, that's exactly what's, what's this dream meant to be. And then he asked him, who's this man? 
Who told you this? I asked the most wisest people, the most smartest people, the biggest people that I have in the palace, and they could have an interpreter. I want this person. Who is he? He said, That's Yusuf. That's Yusuf. He's a righteous man. I lived with him in the prison. I saw his manners. I saw his piety. I saw his righteousness. I heard this from him and I saw that from him. And the king is cheering. Allah Akbar, who's this person? How come I don't know anything about this person? This person shouldn't be locked, being locked up. This person should be in some high authority and respect. So he told him, go back. Give me this Yusuf. I want to see this Yusuf. I want to meet him. I want him to be close to me. I want to benefit out of him. فلما جاءه الرسول قال ارجع إلى ربك فاسأله ما بال النسوة التي قطعن أيديهن إن ربي بكيدهن عليم When the messenger went to call him, he said, MashaAllah, this is my opportunity to clarify my name. They accused me of committing a sin. Go and tell that king of yours that what happened to those ladies who cut their hands and all those witnesses who were bearing witness against me, were they false or were they true? Find all that out and then come and see. Come and get me after that. So the king gathered all those women and then he told them, What happened between you and Yusuf? I heard such, such, such. And you are claiming that Yusuf tried to do the evil with you. I want to hear the truth today. الآن حصحص الحق أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين. These are the moments of the truth. I was the one who was guilty of trying to lure him. He is completely innocent and honest, and he was truthful always. Now Yusuf عليه السلام accepts to come out. Coming out with what? With honor, with respect. Not only they accused him. Not only the wife of the treasurer accused Yusuf alayhi salam, not only the treasurer threw him in the prison. Before that, they made him go on a donkey in the opposite, riding the opposite direction to humiliate him with drums being hitting so everyone could listen and sang after every beat on the drum. Yusuf is getting locked up because he tried to sleep with the wife of the treasurer. Humiliation, ya And how is Yusuf going to come out? People thinking this of him. No one will look at him. Now, the king heard a lot about Yusuf and he's so amazed about him. After this, now he became more amazed. This person was locked up innocently. This is the advice that I'll benefit from. This is the minister I want to keep close. And then he, Yusuf alayhi salam, came out of prison, came forward to the king with honor and respect. And the King said to him, Today, O Yusuf, you have a firm, strong holding and establishment. You're with me today. You are my closest person. What do you want? So Yusuf, what did he ask for? He asked for the job of the treasurer. He said, Assign me for your treasury. Especially what's coming up. I gave you the solution. I don't know how to put it into place. Yusuf wasn't only the treasurer. Yusuf alayhi salam, he ruled everything that the king told him, Oh Yusuf, the only thing I have is my chair. This is the only thing. And the rest was in the hands of Yusuf. Seven years will come past. Those seven years, Allah had blessed him with so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them Seven blessed years. And Yusuf alayhi salam, for seven years, he put a strategy that he kept enough stock for the next seven years. So people were comfortable in the first seven years. And then the next seven years came so tough. And the drought did not only come to Egypt, but even the countries surrounding Egypt. And during that seven tough years, The price of food, the prices of food jumped up to double and triple. And in Egypt, the prices of food is still the same as they used to be before during the good seven years. So Yusuf alayhi salam will give each person a certain amount. 
And if you claim that you have more family members, you have to bring them. He's got to see them and he's got to, he's got to meet them. Or else every person gets a certain amount. And that drought hit Palestine. And who's living in Palestine? His family. And how long has it been? Decades. And his family were Bedouins living in the desert. And when there's a drought, they suffer more than the people who live in the city. So they plan to go down from Palestine to Egypt. The brothers of Joseph, may peace be upon him, walked in. He immediately recognized all of them. They were ten. He recognized all of them. They didn't know who he was. And years had passed. It is reported some historians say 25 years, some say 30 years, some say 40 years. Some take it as far as 80 years having passed. Whatever it is, decades had passed. He asked them, how many brothers do you have? They said, well, 11 in to total. But at that time, there weren't 11. It was less than that. Benjamin, his brother from the same mother and father, was not with them. Yusuf السلام, gave each one of them what they deserve. But they said, we have brothers. We have other family members back home. Yusuf said, I will not give you until you tell me who they are. You bring them, I want to see them. I said, this is his policy. And Yusuf told him, when you come next to you, make sure you bring your brother with you so I could give you what you just asked for. You say there's 11 of you, but there's only 10 here. Bring your other brother. Now Yusuf Alayhisselam could have gave him for 20, 30 people, but he wants his brother from the same mother. His brother that he, he knows that he's been mistreated by his other brothers. He wants to see him. He was more closer to his brother from the same mother, Benjamin, than he was. He was closer than the others. Because them two, Yusuf and Benjamin, they were always mistreated by the other ten. He used to also give him hospitality and make him sleep over. He used to have rooms and he used to have places. Didn't you see? I gave you good hospitality. So next you bring your other brothers. I'm not going to give you for him. I only give you for the number of people that come. Now they know. They know what they've done with Yusuf. They asked their father to let Yusuf to come with him. They went with him and didn't come back with him. And now they know how is their father going to let them take Benjamin with them. So they said between each other, we could deceive our father in any way. And we'll play a game on him. We did it before, we'll do it again. Yusuf is not giving out that food for free. You buy it off him. But you're buying it much cheaper than anywhere else. And Yusuf alayhi salam was afraid that his brothers would not come next to him because they would not have anything to buy with. So what did Yusuf alayhi salam tell his workers? The stock that they just bought from us with, put it back in their caravans. So when they go back, they'll have something to come back with and buy things from us. When they went home, Ya Abana Muni Amin al Kailu, Faarusil Maana Akhana Nektel, Wa inna lahu la hafidun. O our father, we have been prohibited from this one measure because we didn't take our brother with. So send the brother with and we will protect him. Hal Amanu Kumalay illa Kama Amin to Kumala Achim Kabul. The father says, You want me to trust you with him like I trusted you with his brother before? Allah is indeed the protector. Yaqub alayhi salam, he knew that there is something hatching here. Anyway, they, they were now quiet. They didn't know what to say. They started opening their bags. Hey, they noticed there's all the merchandise in the bag over and above the grain. Ya abana ma nabghi hadhihi bidha'atuna ruddat ilayna wa namiru ahlana wa nahfadhu akhana wa nazdadu kayla ba'ir O our father What more can we ask for? Here's all this merchandise is back in here We can take it and go and give it back to them and on top of that we will get another measure Now at least they were honest They wanted to now return it because they said look this is not ours we're supposed to return it so let's get back there and they told the father that we will at least get one more measure so we are going to go there send him with so the father says Lan hatta min Allah. 
لَتَأْتُنَّنِي بِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يُحَاطَ بِكُمْ I am not going to send him with you until you swear by Allah that you are going to bring him back to me unless you are surrounded. So Allah says, فَلَمَّا آتَوْهُ مَوْثِقَهُمْ قَالَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَا نَقُولُ وَكِيلٌ When they had promised and sworn by Allah, still he made a dua, he says, only Allah is the one whom I lay trust in regarding what you have said. Ya'qub alayhi salam says, Oh my children, I have a piece of advice for you. What is the piece of advice? Ya bani ya la tadkhulu min babin wahid wa dkhulu min abawabin mutafarriqah. Oh my sons, there are going to be 11 of you, huge, handsome boys, all entering from one door, children of Jacob. There is a possibility the evil eye might overtake you as you're walking in. So don't walk in all together from one door. I want you to walk in from different doors, two from here, two from there, two from there, and enter from all different doors. So the children walked in, two from there, two from there, two from there, and Yusuf alayhi salam sees them. Yusuf saw his brother from the same mother and father. His brother that he loved and they were close together when they were young and they were getting picked on by his other brothers. His brother, they used to see his other brothers always mistreating him and pick on him. His brother, that he used to see his other brothers bullying him. He gave a room for his brothers, two people in each room. So two by two by two by two, ten of them were in each room. So there was one left. And the one he left aside his brother, he said, you come and sleep with me in the same room. And then... Yusuf alayhi salam will take bin Yamin inside his, the same room. And Yusuf grabbed his brother bin Yamin and hugged him. And he said, I am your brother. And Yusuf alayhi salam felt and he knows how much his brothers mistreat him. And how much they used to bully him. And how much they used to pick on him. Don't worry about what they used to do to you. Don't worry. Today is the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make changes from today. Don't worry about what they used to do. Forget about the past. I'm your brother today. Yusuf alayhi salam agreed with his brother Binyamin. Don't say anything. Let's keep it between us. I'm your brother. You're my brother. But we want to teach our brothers a good lesson for them to understand what they did was a big mistake. So Yusuf alayhi salam is now planning against his own brothers. There was a time when they were planning against him, but they were planning evil. Here he is planning something good. He wants his brother. He must have missed his family for so long. He doesn't know yet whether they are softened or whether they are still hard. In the sense that if their hearts are softened or if their hearts are still hard against him. When he had given them their due, he quietly placed the gold mug of the king into the sack of his brother and it was sealed. And as they were leaving, an announcer called out, Hey, you people are thieves. What? They looked back. They said, We are not thieves. قَالُوا وَأَقْبَلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ مَاذَا تَفْقِدُونَ قَالُوا نَفْقِدُ صُوَاعَ الْمَلِكِ وَلِمَنْ جَاءَ بِهِ حِمْلُ بَعِيدٍ وَأَنَا بِهِ زَعِيمٍ What is it that you have lost? They ask. So the response is, we've lost this mug of the king. And whoever comes with it shall be rewarded. Whoever finds it will be rewarded. And the person who's stolen it obviously will be penalized. قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا جِئْنَا لِنُفْسِدَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا كُنَّا سَارِقِينَ They said, by Allah, we have not come to your land to cause corruption. And we are not thieves. So they ask a question. What do you think should be the punishment of the one who has stolen the mug? They say, well, no problem. You keep him. You imprison him himself. So now Yusuf alayhi salam is happy. And he starts looking and they, his, his men start looking into the sacks. And intentionally, intentionally, he doesn't search that sack first. He starts off with the one, so they're happy. 
The next one, they're happy. The next one, they're happy. He finishes all 10 of them, they're happy. And then he comes finally to the last sack. And they're about to say, you know what? You see, we told you, we're not here to steal. And he says, here you are. Here's this, here's this mug. Allahu Akbar. They took it out. Now the brothers are looking at their brother. And what do they think? They think he's a thief. So what happened? They look and they say, They said, if he stole, we want to tell you, O leader, that his brother was also a thief before him. And is it true? Yes. Yusuf salam, when he was a young kid, he stole. But what did he steal? His grandfather from his mother was worshipping an idol. So Yusuf salam, stole the idol and broke it. So they sneer and they know the story. But they did not say that he committed a theft, but a good one. He committed a theft. If he stole, Benjamin stole, he's like his old brother. He also committed theft. Yusuf kept that intact. Within himself, he said, nah, these people are worse than him. They are in a worse condition. Now they looked at him. They were worried because amongst themselves, they promised their father, we are going to bring this brother back. Now they say, Allahu Akbar. قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَزِيزُ إِنَّ لَهُ أَبًا شَيْخًا كَبِيرًا فَخُذْ أَحَدَنَا مَكَانَهُ إِنَّا نَرَاكَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Oh Aziz, oh you who is a leader here, we want to tell you that we have a father who is a very old man. So why don't you release him and take one of us in his place? Today, they are ready to give one of themselves in the place of the one who is truly found guilty in this sense, according to them. But at that time, they were ready to sacrifice their own brother for nothing, no son of his. So what, does, what is the response? <laughs> How on earth can we punish someone who did not commit the crime and leave the one who is guilty? We are not people who punish the innocent. Now there was a problem because the oldest brother, he said, you know, I really cannot now go home because do you remember what we told our father? We told him and we swore by Allah that we're not going to come back except with this brother. Now the brother is not there. How can we return? I'm not coming back. You people go back. Go back to your father and tell him the truth. That look, your son is a thief and he stole. And we have not witnessed anything but what we know. You can ask anyone, they've seen what happened. You can tell your father that ask the village, ask these people, ask the caravan, ask anybody who came with us. They all know the story. This is what happened. So when they went back to their father, breaking the bad news to their father, the news that their father was not expecting, the very bad news to him, they said to their father, Oh dad, your son stalled. We didn't know that he's that type of person. We, didn't, we, we only witnessed what we saw and unfortunately he had to stay behind and the treasurer is going to keep him as a slave. When they break that news to their father, their father became so passionate. Their father became so upset and sad and he said, again your desires, your souls had played an evil role over you. You did the wrong thing. This is the wrong thing that you just did. Your nafs again let you do this. He says, My patience is very beautiful. I have hope that Allah will bring back all three of these children to me together. Now he's lost three children. Two were gone and the one refused to come back. 
and then he walked away from them. And he was crying and crying and crying. He was so upset and sad. He knows it's a test from Allah, but a human being is a human being. At the end of the day, it's his son. And he started to cry. And Allah says, until his eyes became white, they became covered, that he became blind. He can't see anymore. From crying so much, Yaqub alayhi salam cried so much that he lost his sight. Temporary loss. He did not permanently become blind, but he temporarily lost his sight. And he said that he was crying. Ya Asafa alayhi salam. He's crying on Yusuf. He's still thinking of Yusuf. Can you still remember Yusuf to this day? You still mention Yusuf. Yusuf is still in your mind. Can't you get over it? You're still going to continue thinking Yusuf until you're going to collapse. That's it. Get over it. This is over. I'm not complaining to you. I am complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about my matter. I'm not complaining to you. And this father says, I know from Allah what you don't know. What was that knowledge? The interpretation of the dream. It still has to come true. The young boy told me he saw a dream. That means Allah will raise him high above everybody. I still need to see it. Ya bani yadhabu fatahassasu min Yusuf wa akhihi wa la tayasu min rawhillah innahu la yayasu min rawhillah illa alqawmul kafirun He told them look my children I'm instructing you to go and try and look for Yusuf and his brother and don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed the only people who lose hope in the mercy of the Almighty are those who disbelieve and years had passed it is reported some historians say 25 years some say 30 years some say 40 years some take it as far as 80 years having passed Whatever it is, decades had passed. And here is the man with hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua every day, day in, day out, without losing hope. So they went back. Who's behind? Binyamin and their older brother. And none of them came down to Egypt. They said, oh, Mr. Treasurer, we are facing hardships where we came from. And our family are going through a tough moment. And we couldn't find anything except this cheap stuff. We know it's not worth to buy goods from you. Be generous and donate to us. Give us something in generosity. Give us something back as donation from you. Although what we have in our hands don't deserve to buy what you're going to give us. But you're a generous man. You're a good man. Give us something in return. He looks at them and he says, قال هل علمتم ما فعلتم بيوسف وأخيه إذ أنتم جاهلون. He says I want to ask you one question. Do you know what you did to Yusuf and his brother whilst you people were ignorant? They were shocked. Why? Nobody knows about Yusuf. No one. It's either them or Yusuf himself. When he said that, they immediately knew this man is Yusuf. قالوا أإنك لا أنت يوسف. Are you Yusuf? قال أنا يوسف وهذا أخي قد من الله علينا إنه من يتق ويصبر فإن الله لا يضيع أجر المحسنين. He says, I am Yusuf and this is my brother. Indeed. Allah has blessed us in so many ways and definitely those who bear patience those who are conscious of Allah and bear patience Allah will never waste the reward of those who do good deeds قالوا تالله لقد آثرك الله علينا وإن كنا لخاطئين they said wallahi we swear by Allah Allah has elevated you above us. We were definitely wrong in what we did. Now look at how they had planned his downfall. They wanted to kill him. They threw him in the well. And what Allah did as a result, he raised this man so high above these people that they food 
depended on him after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had to come begging with a bowl like this to say, we need food, tasaddaq alayna, give us a charity here. He didn't wait for more words of praise and he didn't start patting himself and saying, right, you see, now I'm going to punish you. You see this? No, there was no word, no time for that. No negative word. He immediately says, La tathriba alaykumul yawm yaghfirullahu lakum wa huwa arhamur rahimin no blame upon you today i don't want to know anything it's all over forgiven and forgotten let's talk about something else allahu akbar idhhabu bi qamisi hadha fa alquhu ala wajhi abi yati basira wa atuni bi ahlikum ajma'in take my shirt go and place it on your father cast it over him inshallah his eyesight will become clear once again and bring the whole family and come here they were suffering there they expressed their sadness and their condition and here he is saying bring them all and come and live in egypt come <laughs> On one hand, the caravan is leaving Egypt, going towards Yaqub alayhi salam with the shirt. And on the other hand, Yaqub alayhi salam, so many hundreds of kilometers away, is saying, Oh my people, I know I can't see, but I can definitely smell Yusuf. I can smell him. He is coming near. And the people around him are saying, no, man, you just have this obsession. And what you've been saying all along for all these years, you're just repeating it. And it's probably something that you're going to now need to forget. And suddenly the caravan appears. Allahu Akbar. فَلَمَّا أَنْ جَاءَ الْبَشِيرُ أَلْقَاهُ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ فَارْتَدَّ بَصِيرًا قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ الله أكبر When the caravan came, they took the shirt and they cast it over him and his eyes became clear once again. And the story was manifest, open, loud for everybody to read. He says, oh, my children, oh, my people, didn't I tell you I know something from Allah that you people do not know. Now the children are embarrassed because they need to face their father. Years of what they did. For your information, had they not done what they, they did, where would Yusuf alayhi salam have been? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan was such. Allah says they planned and we had a plan and look at the end of that plan Ya abana astaghfir lana dhunubana inna kunna khati'in O our father seek forgiveness for our sin we are definitely wrong we were totally wrong at least they're admitting the sin now so Yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam tells his sons he says, I will ask Allah to forgive you because He is most forgiving, most merciful. Now, the beauty. Allahu Akbar. They all left and everyone was excited and they started the caravan, set out and they're now going to Egypt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing Yusuf alayhi salam preparing to now meet them and as they're entering, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ وَقَالَ دُخُلُوا مِصْرَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ وَرَفَعَ أَبَوَيْهِ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ وَخَرُوا لَهُ سُجَّدًا Look at the scene. Allah says, the parents came in, the brothers came in, they all walked in. Yusuf alayhi salam was so happy to see his parents, mashallah. He brought his, he put his mother and his father next to him on the throne. And what did all his brothers do? They all prostrated to Yusuf alayhi salam, including his mother and father. And he looks and he sees his father, mother and 11 brothers. And he says, 
يا أبت هذا تأويل رؤياي من قبل قد جعلها ربي حقا Oh my father, this is the meaning of that dream that I had had a long, long time ago. Allah made it come true. I see the sun, the moon and 11 stars. Today, my mother, my father and here the 11 brothers. Now it is prohibited for us to put our head on the ground for anyone besides Allah. In our Sharia, in the law that has come with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, your head goes on the ground solely for your maker. Nobody else. Whoever made you, whoever you are going to return to. That is the one and only. But in that Sharia, in order to acknowledge the level and the status of a person out of respect, they bowed down and they engaged in sujood. Obviously with us, it's not allowed. Yusuf alayhi salam, he was one of the most powerful men you could have. He had the control over the Egyptian empire, the kingdom of Egypt. Powerful. It was one of the biggest and the most powerful of the time. And he had so much wealth. He was the one giving to everybody. And he had lots of good looks. MashaAllah, he was the most beautiful human being you could have. So handsome, given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had wealth, he had authority, he had everything you could think of. He had his parents now were here. He had his brothers, they solved the problem in a minute. And he lived with them so well, he gave them dwellings in Egypt. He let them do as they please. He made them people who were looked up to now in society and community. He never went around telling the whole world that, you know, these are my brothers. This is what they did. So here you have a powerful man. He's holding absolutely everything sitting right at the top. He says, Tawaffani Musliman wa I want two things from you, Ya Allah. I want you to cause my death in the state of submission to you. I want to be a slave of yours. I want to be submitted to you, Ya Allah. And I want you to join me with the pious whom you have chosen and selected. Allahu Akbar. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have favored you. These are the stories of the unseen, which you haven't seen. We have revealed them to you. So bear patience. The lesson the moral of the story, be patient, don't worry. Goodness comes to those who wait for it. It's a story that's got a lot of, it's got a lot of principles, lessons that we can learn from. It's not just a story, wallah, we listen to wallah was another story. Not a story that we learn from. And a story that every single one of us can learn from and take as a lesson until we meet again wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik